We're now going to consider adiabatic processes. So adiabatic processes are processes in which no heat is transferred. So as an equation, we can say, well, Q is equal to zero. Now, physically, there's two ways that we can obtain an adiabatic process. One way is to use an insulated container, such as a thermos. If heat can't transfer through the walls of the container, then there is no heat transferred to that system. Another way to do it is to perform the process quickly. So for example, if I compress this gas very quickly, then that's an adiabatic process because it takes time for heat to transfer. Heat transfers from the hotter body to the colder body, but it does so over a period of time. So doing it quickly means that no heat is transferred. So our first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy is equal to Q plus W, for an adiabatic process becomes that the change in internal energy is equal to W, the work done on the system, because Q is equal to zero. Now a really boring example of an adiabatic process is adiabatic free expansion. So imagine that we had a cylinder and we compressed all the gas molecules into the lower half of the cylinder and topped it off with a really thin membrane. Now, if you imagine very gently breaking that membrane, so we're not doing any work in this process, we're just very, very gently removing the membrane. In that case, the gas molecules which were confined to the lower half of the cylinder will be free to expand into the upper half of the cylinder as well. And so in this case, there is no heat transferred, and so this is an adiabatic process. Not all adiabatic processes are this boring. Have a look at this more exciting example. So in this example, Michael was opening up a cylinder of carbon dioxide and letting that gas escape. So the gas was quickly expanding. So because this process was so quick, there was no time for heat to transfer, which is why it is an adiabatic process. However, hopefully you could gather from watching the footage, there is a change in temperature. In this case, we were actually creating dry ice solid carbon dioxide. So how this works is that when Michael opened the flask, the gas rushed out. So in this case, the gas was expanding. And so negative work was done on the gas. Now if negative work is done on the gas, it means that we need to have a decrease in the internal energy of the gas, given that there was no heat transfer. So if the change in internal energy was negative, it means that the final temperature must be lower than the initial temperature. So we have a negative change in temperature. So this is why as the gas rushes out, we get a change in temperature down to a very cold temperature at which carbon dioxide in its solid form, dry ice, can form.